Thanks. I, I like this. Yeah. I've never ever had anybody stand up after, so before is a great thing. So, by the way, this is my no shade November look here. This is every year I do this gray, you know, Santa Claus kind of thing to make my wife happy, actually. So I, I, I'll talk to you a little bit. This ever so briefly for those of you who don't know, no Frontier. We've been around since 1976. We've got three brands in, in the simply organic is an organic seasons. We've got Frontier in the bulk and natural. Uh, herbs and spices, and we have a location in Perso, Carolina. Uh, we've been around a long time, since 1976. Um, kind of born out of the hippies from the 60s, 60s deal. This is up by Palo along the river, that uh, first place. Uh, we've got about 500 and some employees. We've got plants in Norway, which are main plants, North Liberty, Belle Plaine, and Urbana. And uh, um, this is a main plant there. We've got about 20 acres of prairie um, that surround that, that particular facility. So with any company, what I want to try to do to you is, is try to explain not as much about you know, you know, what we do as a company in terms of our products, but what we do as a company in terms of our value system and how we sort of are motivated. And um, you know, this is a this is our value statement. It's been with our company. We've been around for more than 40 years. This has been with us for 35 plus. I've only been there 25, so the origin to this is a little sketchy. But in all that we do at all times with all people, we conduct our affairs. Affairs of the company with unwavering integrity. This is. This is the fundamental thing that makes us tick. If you don't buy into it as an employee, you don't work very long for a company. And it's, it's, it's what we do. That's built on top of it as a mission. Nourish people and planet always be fair. So the nourishment and the plant, all that stuff is more than just the food. It's about how we deal with our, our, our indigenous people around the world. It's about how we deal with our partners here in the United States. And to be fair, that's just a simple Iowa term, I guess, that says, you know, you know, the things that we're doing, we want to do it, we want to do it in the right way. So one day I woke up and I said, what is it that brought me to Frontier? What keeps me at Frontier? What motivates me? Why do we do what we do, right? And, and for me, since the beginning, before I, you know, as I came out of the company, it was like, do great things in the communities in which we work. That's our purpose. This is an internal thing. Every quarter we talk to our employees about what their hard work did and how it impacted the people around the world. And you're going to hear about all this stuff, but it's not a charitable endeavor. This is a business endeavor. So this is for the entrepreneurs. This makes sense. And I'm trying to explain to you how we do not. This isn't a charity thing. We think it's a good idea to support the local communities, our grower communities around the world, because we think it's going to come back to us. And I'll try to explain that. One thing that we have, is we, if you guys didn't know, is Frontier Co-op. We're a co-op. The structure of our company is a bit different. Most are different in so many ways. But it gives us a long view on things. All right? This is, this is like anti-Wall Street kind of. This is, the man ain't making the deal here. We have 48,000 member owners, okay? And it gives us the idea that we can take that and we can have a social responsible platform that extends into the future. We've been here 40. My job is to set it up so it's here you know, 40 more years after I'm gone or something, right? But what it, where our social responsible spending um, actually goes in, and we don't, we don't count our employees and our spending. I want to make sure I clarify that. But it's, it, we, we do, this is our community, right? Our local community, our grower community, and our employees, it extends. Our social responsibility extends across all of that. This year we'll spend about $1.5 million in social responsible spending. And, and a lot of that's here in the local communities, but a lot of it's abroad. But like I said, first and foremost, it starts with, with our employees, okay? It starts with the company. We have a different kind of company. We've never mandated overtime. We've always had childcare for our employees. It's a buck 65, if they got a tiny little kid, it's a buck 85. It was a buck for 33 years, an hour, okay? This is, we, we uh, subsidize our organic cafeteria, our, with all organic lunch for three hours a day you can eat. You, we have the, the best benefits and, and you know, our policies make it so you can have a work-life balance. So we try to maintain a completely different way of doing business with our employees because we know that's the foundation of which the company's going to be successful. In our local area, we do a lot in the area of organic food. Um, you guys might know some of these people like Feed Auto First, Master 25, Grow, um, Grow Jackson County. We did some things with the uh, Indian Creek Nature Center. But we've got a lot of stuff, and there's people in charge of that here in the local communities. But it's about healthy families, healthy eating. And uh, you know, it's just an extension of the, of the food side of our business. So I'm going to give you some examples how I think this stuff works and how I think our social responsibility has made us successful. And, our, and, and you know, we have been successful. Our growth, we've been double-digit growth for 15 years straight, year over year over year. We make good money. It's not charity, right? It's business building. You can spend a million dollars and it's going to come back to you tenfold. So one example is I was in last fall, I went to Guatemala. This is a partner, originally Guatemala. 25,000 indigenous farmers growing cardamom. 
And uh, early, early days, they needed screens and metal detection, things like that. We supplied it. They became this great partner. They came back to us 10 years later and said, you know what we really need? We need a dental clinic. We've got medicine, but we don't have dental. So we opened a dental clinic and Frontier paid for the equipment, the building, and they own the land. It's theirs. We give it to them. You know, no strings attached. We, we, we go into communities and we say, okay, how are we going to be able to help these farmers? Remember, farmers in, in the developing world, if they make three or four bucks a day, that's a big deal. So we're not trying to say, well, we're changing the world or making 10 bucks an hour, but we put, like cutting down the supply chain, in one year we put 25% more in their pocket. So we just keep doing that and we leave that money there. We don't take it with us. And we drive the, drive the, uh, um, the uh, employees and farmers' wages up. Here's a library in Haiti, in Vetiver. You guys know, uh, first off, Haiti is one of the most screwed nations in the world, if you don't know that. And uh, they are. I spent a lot of time in Haiti. Haiti shaped like this. Down in the tip, tip of the thumb there is where Vetiver is grown. Vetiver is the base of all. It's God telling me not to swear. Um, anyway, uh, it's, in the, it's in the base of the, uh, in the thumb, it's Vetiver. Vetiver is the base of all perfuming in the world. And there is where we get our Vetiver. Well, we built a library there. In the community that needed, they had a library. 2008, to, um, 2010 during the earthquake, they lost any kind of semblance of that. We built it, guess what? Hurricane hit it, so now we're probably gonna have to do some rebuilding there. But this is just in the community. So we do things either in the business building, like screens, and, and this one's a bit, this is a grinder project. We either do it in business building or community building, right? So this is a business building. We, we bought them a $42,000 grinder south of India, and, and, and they grind. Instead of bringing that here and taking the offs and using them and you know, trying to get rid of these powders, they do it there. We only ship, saves us freight, and we're able, we paid for that grinder in less than two years, okay? That's not charity, that's like, we can get you the grinder, it's gonna be good. Now they grow this business, we're only a small part of it, but they can use our grinder. This is a really cool project that I hope to go to. Um, they said I could go, but i um, wait a couple more years. Um, but in Afghanistan, there's a gr group of women farmers in the poppy growing area that grow saffron. And if you guys know, it's a very expensive spice, okay? And so, these women are making seven to eight times the local wages to do this. It's a woman's co-op. A, a woman's organization in Afghanistan is crazy. This is really cool because it's run by a bunch of veterans that were there that came back to start this business. And they came to Frontier because I think they liked their social mission and we aligned well. We're a big customer, but they're getting bigger just because they've got a great model. In Vietnam, where we get cinnamon, um, up in the northern area by China, there's a the growing area is so sparsely populated, these kids walk three and four hours to school. So there's a dorm style setting. We help with, um, they got a pretty good education system to get out. We help with the books, the, uh, the beds, the food, whatever for these kids in this, this school in our city of the growing region. In Madagascar, Ylang Ylang, um, these kids are going in the fields. Ylang Ylang is an oil that we have. These kids are going to fields. It's dangerous. The moms are working. So this is for the mothers. Fifty-some kids go through this um, at this school. It's almost a day camp. They're a little under But see, now, you know, if I go back, I, I can tell you example after example, like in the cardamom growing area when there was only one country company in this country that had organic cardamom, and that was Frontier. Because they're our partners and we pay them well, and it's it's in this it's the same thing here. We get the highest quality stuff, we get the best service, we get a decent price. Yet it's a long-term play. So um, this is a really cool story in Sri Lanka. I was there um, about a year and a half ago now. Um, you guys remember the Tamil Tigers fought for 25 years in, in Sri Lanka? They're a, little, a group of people out the south of India. And they were finally, you know, the war ended. And the coolest thing I've ever seen, I went around with the general, and in this area, they took 400,000 400, displaced Tamils and put them in this part of Sri Lanka, and they're actually putting up this development. And in the development, there's wells at every corner. So Frontier helped put the wells in there. Now, why do we do that, right? Well, guess what? The land's organic. It hasn't been touched. It's going, they're going to be our partners someday. It takes years for them to get there, but we're going to be there for them. And this is an investment in that. It's just, but, but was, the coolest thing about that trip was um, the general put all the army to, into building the houses. So instead of shooting each other or shooting, pointing guns at those dudes, they were swinging hammers. So it's really cool how, and, you know, how I mean, that's one of the things we could probably do a little bit better on our own here in the United States. Um, so the last example I have here is Madagascar. And in Madagascar, this is the vanilla growing region, we put 49 wells in these 38 communities because kids will walk in a couple hours. Now, this is a lot of community, but also they blanch the beans and they need good, clean water. And that's, 
the biggest issues facing the world. I mean, we heard a little bit about that today. So in the developing world, it's even more. So Frontier went there and did that. So, all, you know, to kind of tie it up here, this is just good business. I know our marketing and sales people, there's a couple of whatever in the room, they don't like me talking about this because people want to talk about charity, but see, I think that's disingenuous. Okay, I think the fact of the matter is that we think that this million dollars it, that we do every year, this is not, a, we, it's a million year over year, it's a lot this year. We make it as a percent of our profits, 4% of our pre-tax profits. So we peg it to our success. But we can't decouple the fact that this is fundamentally what makes us the kind of company we are. It's our source, and we do food and spices and herbs, it's about the product. But yet, it's our marketing campaign. I mean, you, you can't, I mean, if you, if you go online and you look at what Frontier's done, see some of those videos, Watch the one where we're in Madagascar where the little girls jump up and start dancing and singing. It wasn't pre rehearsed. It was taken by the purchasing guy. But if you watch that, why the hell would you buy our vanilla? I mean, how can you not like those little girls, you know? And, and look what you did by buying our stuff. So if, if we think this is just good business. It's served us well for 40 years. My, my belief it will serve us well for another 40. So thank you.